Hello, true believers, and welcome to another edition of BK's Bullets. My name is not Brent Casina. My name is Jim Afanis, and I want to give you guys my review of Crisis on Infinite Earths. Now, hopefully you just watched Brent's review. He broke it down into two different episodes. I'm gonna talk about everything in one shot and I'm not gonna be as kind as he was. I love Arrow. I wanna be very clear on this. Arrow is one of my favorite TV shows. I waited a very long time to meet and get a photograph with Stephen Amell. I am very, very sad the show is coming to an end. However, I'm not as big of a fan as Flash and as Legends of Tomorrow and really even of Batwoman. That said, I understand that these crossover shows are going to pull everybody together. So there are going to be some characters and some themes that really go over my head because I'm really more of an Arrow fan than anything else. And I understand that. But I feel my criticisms on Crisis on Infinite Earths do not draw upon my lack of knowledge of the other shows, more of a lack of vision of this crossover event. But before I get into all the negatives, I wanna talk about some of the positives and I wanna talk about some of the things that I really enjoyed. I thought that ultimately the show did a very good job of pulling across all of the shows in a non-systematic way. So in the old crossover events, it used to be an episode based on Arrow's cast and then an episode based on Flash's cast where you might have one or two characters kind of crossing over to kind of, you know, pass the baton from show to show. That was gone in this. Basically, all the characters were together. All the supporting characters were helping each other throughout the entire arc. And I thought ultimately that it worked really well because all the characters got spotlight all the time. Well, not all of them, and that is a criticism I will get into in a little bit, but you understand my point. Uh, I also really liked the idea of the redemption of the Monitor. Uh, basically, this was a scientist who screwed up, and he accidentally caused basically the end of the world. It was really interesting to see kind of his journey because he was very unknown as a character. We got some flashbacks over who he was and what he was about. And ultimately, I felt that he got a nice story arc in of himself. I also really liked the fighting scenes in this. And I thought they did a great job, understand on a TV budget, with really bringing all its characters together in these giant hero moments, these giant arenas where you had Superman and Superwoman flying around, or Supergirl flying around, you know, shooting enemies with lasers while you had, you know, White Canary down you know, on the ground with some melee. It really reminded me of what the Avengers did, um, what I love so well with the Avengers and Marvel. And that one scene, you know the scene I'm talking about where the camera pans and all the Avengers are fighting and then they all get back together. I thought this was a great, great way to show off the strength of all of the DC heroes. I thought they all had some great heroic moments and some of those big battles I thought were done very, very well. However, I think that's where the good stuff stops and we start to get into some significant problems with this. First of all, this show was way too long. It was five episodes to put together a story, which if it had a meaningful villain, this anti-monitor, anti if he was a meaningful villain that was built up, that really was something that was a challenge of the heroes, I would have thoroughly enjoyed it. And even though in the first four episodes, it takes the hero some time to figure out how to take this guy down, when he reappears in the fifth episode and they take him out in one single segment, I think it really negates and it falls flat on its face. If the villain is this ultimate villain, he needs to be an ultimate villain. There's no do-overs. I don't know why that fifth episode honestly even existed outside of some loose ends in the other four. But in terms of taking out the big bad, you not only take him out once, you take him out twice and the second time is significantly easier than the first. It really negates everything leading up to that. Um, I also was not a big fan of the disservice I thought they did to Oliver, Gwe Oliver Queen's character. Now, again, I mentioned I'm a huge Arrow fan. The fact that he died off screen, the fact that he died in such a meaningless way, and the fact that he was somehow brought back in these various points of time via the Flash where he kind of spread his body or his spirit across multiple instances of himself, I thought was very silly. 
I thought that he should have died a great hero's death, and he really doesn't even do that when he dies at the end of 4 the second time where he's fighting the Anti-Monitor one-on-one. He doesn't even defeat the Monitor, <laughs> so the Anti-Monitor. He basically um, unifies the Earth into what they call the Prime Earth, where all the heroes now live together. But short of that, his goal of this training he had been doing for this grand battle, something that had been beaten into our heads for episodes and episodes leading up to this, all this training that he was supposed to do from the monitor and this great physical test he was supposed to endure never culminated into much of anything. I think his fight with Deathstroke honestly was more demanding or more taxing than what he did with the Anti-Monitor. And I thought that was a huge disservice to his character and my number one reason that I did not like the way that they wrote him off. Um, I was also not a big fan of the random people that got a lot more spotlight than I thought other heroes should have. Now, again, I talk a lot about Arrow. So I understand that Lex Luthor is an important character, and I'm not taking away from his role in um, Supergirl. I'm not taking away from his role in DC. The fact that he weaseled himself in by crossing out a magic scroll with a Sharpie and writing his name on it and somehow giving himself godlike superhuman laser beam powers was a little much to swallow. And I thought that that was nonsensical. But if you thought that was bad, wait until you find out that one of the Paragons, one of the seven elite chosen warriors of Earth, of all the Earths across all the multiverse, is a random guy we have never seen before who is a sort of Felicity-like um, hacker. That's his role. He is good with computers. It was really, really bad. It felt extremely flat. This guy has a lot of screen time and he takes away from other characters who I think are significantly more deserving than him. And I didn't understand why they put so much emphasis on him. Maybe he'll uh, you know, have a, a greater role in the future, but maybe not. And that leads me to my next criticism is who was this show actually for? If it's for fans of the existing show, I think it did a very poor job of explaining all of these other characters that kind of just rose into being. One of which was Wells when he turned into the, I don't know, the prophet or whatever his name was, where he was kind of the observer of the whole thing. You had Arrow in Purgatory meet some random guy who is the Spectre, who isn't really explained in the television show. And I get it. A lot of the hardcore comic book fans are like, oh, well, that's so-and-so. He's featured in episode 13 of this comic book or whatever. Again, who is this show for? Because as a, sh a fan of the show and only the show, I wouldn't understand that. And up until now, I think the show has done an incredibly good job of explaining who the characters are and why they matter and why I should care about them. They all have backstories, they all have meanings, they all have purposes, they all have comeuppance, etc. We didn't have that with this show. And despite the fact that it was five episodes, they did not do a good job of building up these ancillary characters who played pivotal roles throughout the story that just kind of came and left. And it just didn't really resonate well in terms of a cohesive story from beginning to end. I didn't necessarily feel that. And that was really a major disservice. But I thought the ultimate disservice was at the very end when all of the heroes get together and merge into what they call Earth Prime, which is a cool idea. No more of this Earth crap about teleporting to Earth 2 or 3, whatever. Everybody's on the same universe. I like that. I think that's a great, great idea. I don't know why they had to make this special in order to have them do this. This should have been from the beginning. Hopefully it leads to more team-ups in the future. Hopefully it leads to more cameos and we can start getting a much more blended universe, which I think plays to the strengths of what the DC shows could be. However, at the prime moment when they make this funeral pyre to Oliver Queen and Flash unveils this table and now they are this, you know, almost like a pseudo-Justice League, um, they all say their farewells to Oliver Queen. And we don't have Black Canary there. We don't have uh, Diggle there. These characters who have been with Arrow really since day one, you know, to give him this final eulogy, instead we have Black Lightning, who even admits, I don't even know who the guy is, but he seems kind of cool. Uh, it just was like, wow, what a huge disservice to Arrow. 
you know, this guy's legend. And I understand that there's a couple shows left for him. Hopefully we can get some closure out of next, those next two episodes. But man, it would have really, really, really been nice if the characters that were most influenced by him were actually there to say goodbye to him. And I think that is my biggest frustration with this is that we had a lot of time here and we didn't utilize it very well. Ultimately, I think the special five episode arc really served the purpose in terms of getting the universes together. The question I think you have to ask yourself is do the ends justify the means? And if you're happy with where the show is ultimately going to be, then this uh, crossover event will largely be forgotten almost immediately. It'll just be known as something that happened to bring everybody together. But in of it standing on itself, of it being this epic moment that really is supposed to forge and solidify our bonds and our loves for our heroes, I think it largely falls flat because there are a lot of major missteps in this and it was really, really frustrating. So it was a fail for me pretty much on every stretch, uh, or every goal, every sense of the imagination. I, I thought they could have done much better. And even throwing in cameos of the Flash, um, you know, back to the old Flash from the 90s of a little flashback scene there of, uh, uh, I don't even know the guy's, um, I don't know the wife, his wife or his girlfriend, but it was clearly footage from that show of him basically seeing his life flash before in his eyes. Even with the uh, Ezra, Ezra Miller cameo where the two Flashes are talking to each other, um, that didn't save it. These might have been, oh, wow, gee, these are great moments. But in terms of the longevity of the Arrow universe and in terms of trying to bring everything forward, I don't think that this whole arc worked at all. So major, major, major thumbs down for me across the board. I'm very curious to see how Arrow ends up. And I will definitely be doing another video to close out that entire series in a couple weeks when it comes to an end. Um, I'll probably still stick with Black Lightning. I may give the uh, Canaries or whatever it's called uh, a chance just because I'm a fan of the Arrow universe, but largely um, I thought a big disservice to my favorite guy. And for that, it was a major downvote for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys in the funny pages.